or an end. And that threshing floor became the place where the altar of sacrifice was for the temple in Jerusalem. The angel put up his sword. And that is the place where the temple was built. Place of deliverance. And if we get nothing else from today, just think of this. He said, if my people, you know, go by my name, he said, and this house upon whom my name is called, <coughs> his name is called over the temple. His name is called. Paul was told, Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Some people think water baptism is not important. But it is important because that is when the name is called. There is nothing like this. I do not understand why the Christian world has rejected water baptism in Jesus' name. When it is the most clear doctrine in the New Testament. Repent and be baptized. Every one of you. What men and brethren, what shall we do? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. If that's true, the remission of sins, and it comes to the name of Jesus Christ in water baptism, why would we take a chance on anything else? We will tell you, oh no, it should be in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Ghost. That is the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Ghost. Father's not the name of God. Son's not the name. Holy Ghost is not the name. The name is Jesus. There is not one place in the New Testament where anybody was baptized using the words Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Because God placed His name in the temple. What is the name of God from the Old Testament? Yahweh. What is Jesus? He said, I came in my Father's name, which is Yahweh. Yahshua. Yahweh saved. The name is placed in the temple. The Gentiles upon whom my name is called, he said. He's taking out of the Gentiles a people for his name. Do we realize how important a doctrine this is? Why so much of the Christian world does not see this? I do not know. To me, it's inexplicable. How can you miss that? That is the fulfillment of the Great Commission. Last thing. I'll just read this to you. Wherefore, laying aside all malice, all guile, dishonesty, and hypocrisies, acting, envies, and evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, if so be that you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Have you tasted that? Yeah. To whom as coming, coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men. So don't worry if men, no, if men disallow you, don't worry about it. <coughs> Jesus was disallowed indeed of men. But chosen of God and precious, ye also as living, lively stones are built up, up and spiritual house and holy priesthood 
to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, a precious elect, precious. He that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made to have the corner. A stone of stumbling, a rock of offense, even to them that stumble at the word being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him, the praises of him, the praises of him. That's when you're going to get your answer. When you start praising him for the answer that you prayed about. Start listening to God, as it was said. Who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God. Which had not obtained mercy, but now have attained, obtained mercy. And it goes on. God dwelleth not in temples made. God does not dwell in temples made with hands. Abraham went out not knowing whether he went, but it said, he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. We are the city that Abraham was looking for. And the builder, and the, the, the city has foundations. The foundations are the apostles, the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, the apostles' doctrine. They followed steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. I do not understand how people can skip that apostle's doctrine. Jesus said, I pray not for these only, but for all <coughs> them that believe on me through their word. Someone will say, God the Father was never came and was never manifest in the flesh. That's a direct contradiction to Isaiah 96. Child is born, a son is given, but shall be upon children. His name shall be called Wonderful Counsel, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. The Everlasting Father was manifest in the flesh. Jesus said, if you see me, you have seen the Father. Why look we any further? He is the true God. And we are the true temple. I am not talking about this little bunch of us who are here today. But I'm talking about the church of the living God. Right. The church that's built on a foundation. The church that is blood washed. Blood washed. The church in the book of Revelation. The church built upon this rock. The rock of the revelation of who Jesus is. He wants us to be intelligent people. He wants us to understand the word of God. He wants us to understand that we have been grafted in to the Jewish people. That is the Jewish people in relationship to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because they are Jewish people that need to be grafted into, into Abraham, the father of the faith. Could we stand?
when you think about yourself, when you think about